The two of them said, Oh, our Rabb, we have oppressed ourselves. We have wronged ourselves. And if you are not going to have mercy on us, if you are not going to forgive us, we are going to be the losers, Ya Allah. So forgive us, Ya Allah. And Allah says, We forgave him immediately. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وبعد. You will need to come down to earth. In it you will go hungry and you will go thirsty and you will have to plow and, and you will have to go through hard work in order to earn your living and your survival. Not like paradise. Allah is telling him the difference between what you were in and now where you're going. In there you will have a temporary abode and you'll have temporary enjoyment. I will be with you. I will keep giving you guidance and signs. Now if we look at Adam alayhi salam, he came down onto the earth. Where did he land? This we find in the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, where he says, that Adam alayhi salam, he came down in what is known as the indo pak subcontinent, precisely Sri Lanka. There is a mount there known as Adam's Peak. It is said that there is a possibility that that is the place. We don't know for certain that that spot is the place, but roughly there. What about Hawa? Where did she come down? In Jidda. Where is Jidda? Jidda is in the Arabian Peninsula in what we know today as Saudi Arabia. And what is the meaning of Jidda? It means the grandmother. It is named after her. Adam salam and Hawa searched for each other. In one narration it says, they found each other on the mountain of Arafat. That's the name of the mountain, the mountain of acquaintance. Maybe because Adam salam and Hawa found each other on that mountain. Getting to the children of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, how did they come about? Hawa, may peace be upon her, she gave birth 20 times. Each time there was a boy and a girl. They were of different colors, different shapes and sizes in the sense that, you know, the looks were varying from one to the other and so on. And at that time, they had to be married. So how were they going to marry? They had a different law. So as the children grew, one of the oldest children was known as Qabil in the English language Cain. And the one younger than him was known as Habil or Abel in the English language. So what was the difference between these two? Cain was not so good looking and Abel was very handsome. And the sister of Cain was very good looking, but she was born from the same womb. So those two were what we call womb brothers and sisters. And when it came to Abel, he was very good looking, but his sister was not as good looking. So Adam alayhi salam says, you will marry the sister of this one and this one will marry your sister. So Cain, his sister was very good looking. He looked at this girl he's supposed to marry and he says, she's not that good looking. Cain says, I don't want my sister to go to him and I don't want to have his sister. I'd rather have my own sister, he's saying. Astaghfirullah. Habil tried to advise him, my brother, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for this is his decree. Now Adam alayhi salam knew about this, so he brought them together and he said to them, why don't you both go and offer an offering for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see which one will be accepted. In those days, if you donated something or made an offering for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they would see something like fire come down and it will take the offering. It's a sign of acceptance that I have accepted your piety. Habil, he was a shepherd. He had sheep and Qabil was a farmer. He grew wheat and crops. Habil went and got his finest, fattest, best sheep. And he gave it as an offering. Qabil went and got his worst bits of wheat that he had. And so Allah accepted the fine one and rejected the ugly one, the piety is what he was after. So because of that, he said, I'm going to kill you. Allahu Akbar. Qabil began to develop this and Habil kept on advising him. My brother, Allah accepts only from those who are pious. Meaning my brother, if you are pious, Allah will accept it from you. 
It seems that I have given it impiety. Be a pious person, Allah will accept it from you. It is not because of the sister or whatever. It's because of yourself. Be pious to Allah and all will be resolved. But you're not letting yourself go. You're not submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's given him an advice. But the truth hurt his brother. It only made the jealousy grow. Qabil wanted to kill his brother. What did his brother Habil say? He said, Yet, O oh brother, if you stretch out your hand against me to kill me, I shall not stretch out my hand to kill you. For I fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Instead, I would prefer that you bear the burden of my sin and your sin together. And so become an inhabitant of the fire. That is the recompense of the transgressors. One night when Habil was asleep, Qabil grabbed a massive rock and came and crushed his brother's head with the rock. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, From that day to the day of judgment, every innocent life that's being killed, Qabil gets a portion of the sayyat. Because he is the first one to start it. And Qabil feel guilty. He sat there looking at his brother. And he started regretting. And now he went away. He went to Adam alayhi salam. And he carried on with the day. And Adam alayhi salam asks him, where's your brother? He says, my brother, I'm not responsible for him. Why do I have to know where he is and what's happening? Immediately Adam alayhi salam knew that there's something wrong. This child is hiding something from me. Now, later on in the evening, he went back to the body and he's looking at it. And the following morning, he's looking at this body again. And now it started releasing a stench. So Qabil put Habil on his back and went. He doesn't know what to do. So while Qabil is walking in the middle of nowhere, what does he do? Confused what to do with his brother. In front of Qabil, two crows will come. One crow will kill the other one. And then after that crow will kill the other one, will dig up a hole and bury that crow and cover him with the dust. So Qabil saw that. He knew that's the way to do with his brother. So he dug up a hole and he buried his brother Habil in that hole. And then he became from the guilty ones, but did not repent. Qabil did not repent. And what did Qabil do after that? Qabil, he grabbed his sister and he ran away from Adam. He's too shy to face his father. And he ran off and lived on the flat surface of the land. People living on the mountains. Qabil was the first human being to live on the flat surface of the land. And then Qabil with his sister started to produce kids. And then the descendants of Qabil started on one side. And Adam alayhi salam on the other side. And the facade and the corruption start to spread from Qabil and his descendants. And thereafter what happened? Adam alayhi salatu was salam and his wife Hawa alayhi salam, they had many children. And he saw some of his grandchildren and his great grandchildren. And it is reported that he'd seen thousands of them. And Adam alayhi salam used to constantly remind them and he used to tell them. And some of his children continued that reminder. One of them was a child known as Sheath. He was also a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adam alayhi salatu was salam got sick. And look at Allah's plan. Allah made him wish for something. Wish for what? Certain fruits he had eaten in Jannah. He still remembered the taste. So he was wishing for it, making dua to Allah, saying, Ya Allah, I'm wishing for these fruits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him that at a certain place, you will find something. Not that you will find the fruits, but at a certain place, you will find something. He was not healthy enough to go there. So he decided to send some of his children. He says, go to that place and you will find something for me there. So when they went there, they found some angels. What did they have with them? They were dressed in white. And they had some tools with them. There was a pick and a shovel and tools to dig. Now these tools were new to the children of Adam alayhi salatu was salam. These angels told the children of Adam, we are angels and we want you to go back to your father. He is ill and his time is up. 
So they walked with the children of Adam alayhi salam back to Adam alayhi salam. And as they entered, Hawa, may peace be upon her, she recognized this angel is the angel of death. So she quickly started going behind Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and he says, no, 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 don't worry, move away. And Adam alayhi salam lived for 960 years. Adam alayhi salam's original life's length was a thousand years. When the angel of death came to take the soul of Adam, Adam was amazed. I've still got 40 years to live. So he told him, why are you coming to take my soul now? Am I supposed to live for a thousand years? So the angel of death told him, did you forget the 40 years he gave Dawood? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Adam denied and forgot, and ever since then his descendants have been denying and forgetting. He says, no problem. However, he first gathered his children. Look at this. On his deathbed, and he reminded them saying, Allah will send messengers to you. He will not leave you alone. These messengers will come. Different languages, different names, different dialects, but their message will all be one calling you to worship one Allah, the one who made you and to stay away from the devil and to be careful that the biggest crime anyone can commit is to associate a partner with the creator. And after he reminded his children, the angels took his soul away and he passed away. When he went, what happened? The angels had come with the tools and they dug a proper grave and they washed the body of Adam alayhi salam with water. They enshrouded him properly and they led the janazah of Adam alayhi salatu was salam. One narration says that Jibreel instructed sheep to lead the salah and another narration says the angels themselves led that salah. Only Allah knows but the salah was done and he was buried and once he was buried, the angels looked at the children of Adam alayhi salatu was salam and says, this is the way you shall do it when anyone from amongst you passes away. Where was he buried? Some narrations say he was buried fil hind, close to where he had descended. Whereas other narrations say that he was buried in Mecca by the mount known as Jabalu Abi Qubais. Just outside where the Haram is now, he was buried somewhere there. And then after the death of Adam, it was his son, Shaith, which took over the leadership of his father and he was the second prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad, subhanallahi wa bihamdih, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaha.